Testing. Can you guys hear this? You got audio? Sweet. Jacob, let me ha let me give the everybody a chance to find this stream cuz I just put it back up. Yeah, that sucks. I don't know what happened. Go figure, you know, you think you got it figured out. It just doesn't work. Can you hear me good or is it kind of quiet? Does it need to be louder? Okay, cool. I think I lost a lot of people because when you end the stream, it's like a video that just goes away. So hopefully I didn't F. Oh, there we go. Matt's gaming. Very cool. Yeah, if you guys don't mind, just give me like five minutes just to let some people get in. All right, 512 is here. All right, cool. I got a lot of stuff. It's kind of cool. Um, no, oh, there's Lou. Lou's my bro-in-law. What's up, Bass in 512? Lou, we need some more of those pina coladas over here tonight. Ricky Simpson. That's my uncle, guys. My dad would be losing his mind. Yes, he probably would. So here's the deal. Everybody just got in. We're going to hang out for maybe two minutes and then we're going to go live on some stuff. I got, I got more than just that unboxing. I mean, it's kind of cool, but it wasn't like, um, you know, anything to blow your socks off, but it's pretty neat. Um, I've got some other lures from China and I've got some, uh, tackle storage stuff and just wanting to hang out. Cause, uh, yeah, I never, I've never done a live stream before. So I figured what the heck I give it a shot. So I'll try to keep looking at the camera, not looking at myself. So you guys feel like I'm looking at you. Family is here. There you go. So cool. Love me some Asian lures, Bass and 512. Yeah, they're cheap. Uh, I'll look at those for now. Let's Before we do the unboxing, let's look at the Chinese lures. All right, you guys know, um, oh, shoot, I forgot what they're called. They're uh, poppers made by... Um, mega bass and i can't remember what they're called but they look like this does anybody know what those those are called just bought a karate dc finally jacob pool awesome yeah that's a dc's are killer anyway this popper right here is made by mega bass um well it looks huge it's not as big as you think i mean it's yeah it's kind of big but um I got these from China. Mega Bass makes the same popper. I mean, it looks identical. Matter of fact, I have, let's see if I have my phone in my pocket. You got to see the, how close it is. I mean, it's not something that I'm super proud of that they're copying it, but it's kind of neat. Um, let's see, Pat. Let's find that picture. Look at this. This is ridiculous. I don't know if you can see that. Let's hide behind my phone. There you go. You can see like how close they look. The Mega Bass lure is 20 bucks. These, these look almost exactly the same. And they have the blow through gills, like the little holes in the gills where it comes through. Um, they're made exactly the same, it looks like. The hooks are great. Everything's cool. And they're uh, $349. And Mega Bass is $19.99. This is the white one, the crackle paint. I think that looks cool. That's pretty neat. And then I got like a bass one. But yeah, for 10 bucks for these. That would have been like 60 bucks in mega bass dollars, you know? So, and they come with little uh, hook guards and everything. Uh, I gotta be careful. I don't want to hook myself. Hooks are killer. Oops. Yeah. Hooks are killer. I'm trying to keep up with talking and reading as I'm going. So I'm not going to be doing real good at it. Lou, that looks good. Henry is a bow champ. Bouchamp. Bow champ. I call dibs on the next thing in the box. <laughs> All right. Maybe. Maybe, you know what the problem is with sending you guys lures? Like, I don't mind doing giveaways, but whenever I go to like UPS store or I go to uh, 
post office, it's like seven bucks to send stuff. Like, so somebody will win like a $10 frog and I got to spend like seven bucks to ship it. So I got to figure out a better way to do it. Vanessa Simpson is here. That's my daughter. She's the one putting little fishies on there. Yeah. The bass one looks really cool, Jacob. It's sweet. Um, yeah, I'm going to try these Asian ones out, but anyway, since some people are here, let's go ahead and do, um, oh, my daughter wants to see the frogs. I got something better than frogs. Um, George Cosgriff, welcome. So I've got the monster bass box. It's the Lunker Hunt box. I don't really know. So what happened was with monster bot bass is I, I signed up with monster bass and I said, Hey, would you guys be willing to let me ambassador or join your program or however it works? I didn't really know how it worked. So they sent me like a discount code and they said, Hey, you get $8 and 35 cents off of a pro box. And so I was all excited. I thought, Oh, that's awesome. But I I'm still paying like 20, 25 bucks for a box. Um, but I get it discounted and then they give me like coupon codes to buy stuff. And then I guess if you guys click the link in my videos and you get a discount and it also goes to me to get a little bit off on my next box or whatever, however that works. So, um, Lewis E try USPS. Yeah, I will try USPS. Okay. So here's the Lunker hunt box. Now these first things that I'm bringing out here is, uh, these are called catch big fish. I don't know what they're called catch big fish they don't really say anything they're worms that's what they are so pulling one out they're senkos but they feel weird and kind of eely and greasy and cool good color i like that wine the dark purple they stink pretty good um yeah they look pretty solid i don't know if they float but they're the lunker hunt brand anybody use the lunker hunts yeah i don't know if the uh Bass and 512 asked if the monster bass box is worth it. I don't think for me long term, um, box subscriptions is really going to be worth it because I buy too many unique, weird things. So, what will happen is I'll spend money on this bass box and then I'll go out and buy stuff too. So, it's kind of like counterproductive. I'd be better off if I just didn't have the bass box and just went and bought what I wanted. But um, I think, I think over time, you know, I, I figured I'd give it a, ch a chance at least because I wanted to at least hang out with a company for a little while and see how the uh, partnership worked out and if it went anywhere. Because if I get enough subscribers that pass through my site, then eventually I could end up maybe getting some of this stuff for free. Then it would definitely be worth it. But, um, you know, 20, 30 bucks a month. So here's a spider that came in the Lunker Hunt box. These are cool. These are just like realistic and creepy. Billy Knowles, what's up? Yeah, I'm with you, man. No boxes. I got it. Yeah, this spider. Tell me that thing's not wicked looking. It's basically just a frog is all it is with legs. Um, I'll pull it out so you can see it. Pat bought me one the other day. They were on sale in, in Dick's for seven bucks. So I don't know how much this would be retail, but it, it looks creepy as heck. And I mean, it looks very real. Now, when you throw them in the water, they tend to kind of like dive down into the water a little bit and then float back up. So you got to work them kind of like tip up, kind of ride them across the top. I've yet to get a hit on one, but I don't see why you wouldn't. I mean, this thing looks like a freaking spider, man. That thing is about as real as possible. You ever wonder why people put their hands up behind their baits It's because your camera focus is looking for your eyes. Tip of the day. Let's see. Lewis, Natalie laugh out. Is Natalie here? Use... Those yeah, I was going to throw one of those uh, spiders on the floor and prank my wife, but I figured it would probably be so realistic that it wouldn't be funny. She'd probably smack it and hook her hand or something. Who's, uh, let's see. Vanessa, my daughter, said sick. See the black one? It looks sick. Yeah, the black spider. Okay, so this is a prop fish. I don't know about this lure, man. I have one up in the garage, and they sent me another one. Um, what do you guys think of these? has a little spinny tail it's kind of trying to be like a soft body whopper plopper type thing but it doesn't really make much noise yeah i mean it, it compresses well it looks like it would be a good frog but i just don't know if that tail does anything or if it matters i mean is that just basically a frog yeah it floats it definitely floats it kind of kind of does one of these deals and when it's in the water it's kind of angled and then when you reel it in it pulls up on top and it creates like a bubble trail i guess it would be like a torpedo kind of like a torpedo when you pull it across the water um and it's weedless so you could throw it in the weeds so but i like the color i mean the color's hot 
it's black. I like that like little turquoise eye and stuff in there. What's the clarity like on my video quality? Is it streaming clear? <laughs> Fast and five twelve says I pass. I get you. I know it's like it's so funny because me and Pat go fishing and we're always like, yeah, I got this lure and I got that lure and I got that lure. He'll be like, yeah, hand me my Kyara frog. I'm like, I got you. I know how it is. So this looks kind of cool. This is a, what do they call it? A Yappa series? A Yappa rat. I kind of like these rats. You guys, are, you saw this before. My uh, CL8 Bates rat. Come on, focus. Focus. Anyway, this rat right here is a topwater rat, and that thing's killer. This in brown is it's really awesome it works great so i i kind of like the whole rat mindset and it just it feels cool when you're fishing a lure that bass uh will eat something so weird like a furry little animal this is kind of gross man <laughs> look at this dude i mean it looks like a cartoon ratatouille or something look he's got little arms like he's flexing Oh, it doesn't walk well. Yeah, I could see that because look, the uh, the the walking mouth is kind of soft, so I don't know if it's going to really give you a good. It's supposed to do this. Yeah, it's supposed to do that. It's supposed to do this when it goes through the water, kind of walking, and I don't know if it will. But you know, another soft body lure. I mean, you got to hand it to Lunker Hunt. At least they try new stuff. You know, whether or not it works really great or not, they they put out a lot of products that are kind of unique. And then I think last, I think last in this pack, unfortunately, is a frog, which everybody's seen this one before. I'll pull this out. This would be a lot easier if I had someone here hanging out with me talking because you'd be more natural. So maybe I'll do it with Pat next time. He had to go to uh, uh, a prom with his daughter tonight because they didn't have prom because of the COVID thing. And then they, they rented out like a building and had all their kids come over and they did their own prom for the kids, which was pretty cool. So he's not here tonight. So I told him next time we're going to talk about and, and do some stuff together. This is the Lunker Hunt Frog. I really like these. Let's see if I can get this focused in here for you. Yeah. I mean the legs, what do you guys think about the legs? Who uses these? Oh, William Powers. Try. Oh, William Powers. That's Pat. Pat Powers is here. Oh, wow. What's William? Is your name William? I didn't know my fishing buddy's name is William. The heck? Anyway, <laughs> here's my Lunker Hunt frog. Uh, the legs look cool. It looks like he's like, like, like the real, but uh, I don't know. I always feel funky throwing this frog. The body's great. The hooks are awesome. So it probably would work just fine, but uh, it freaks me out. Uh, William Powers. Yep. His name is William. Go figure. Learn something new every day. George Cosgriff looks like he's riding a bike. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It's kind of funny, but yeah, that's the Lunker Hunt box. What do you guys think about that? I was give it a B minus C plus. I don't know. I'm not a very good ambassador for this company. I mean, they're kind of like, yeah, we're going to not do anything else with Joe Simpson. He kind of sucks, but I just don't want to sell out and just say a bunch of nice stuff just to say a bunch of nice stuff. I got a sticker. I do like the old American flag. That looks nice. Let's see what else. Oh, here's one. No, never mind. It's a premium product magazine catalog. Something to look at. You know where I'll read that, right? No, they're okay. You're going to sell out. <laughs> um, lost several legs on them. Yeah, I hear those legs fall off. I keep getting these. How do you pronounce this? Is it Daiichi? I, I called it Daihachi the other day, but it's Daiichi, I think. It's Japanese. These hooks are pretty good. The last fish, that big fish I caught when I was uh, bottom fishing the other day, I call it big. Three and a half, four pounds is big for me. But the big fish I caught was um, on one of these hooks, and it, like, pinned them good. So they must be decent. So that's about all I got with those. What did you guys think about these um, dark sleepers that I got from China? This is the real mega bass dark sleeper mega bass probably hates me. They're probably like, man, this dude does nothing but buy mega bass knockoffs, but that's the real deal. And that's the imitation. Check that guy out. I mean, it looks, Oh, there you go. They look the same. 
to me. They swim pretty good. You'll notice that this tail has like an angular connection and you notice this tail is really going at it. And this tail right here, if I could hide my face, doesn't have that angular connection. So it doesn't have quite the, the motion in the water that the real one does. Um, those are ones I want to get. Oh, Bassin. Yeah, you just go on AliExpress, and I think they're called jump fish. Just type in jump. They have dumb names. I don't get it. They probably just don't translate right, but uh, it's called jump fish, and then when you get in there, you'll find it, and it'll show up. Oh, here's something really cool. I feel like uh, Elliot showing ET all of his stuff in his room. So here's a uh, – it's a for a fly rod. It's a little frog. So check this dude out. It's got an aluminum hook. And the way it's built with this flexible float floating material is when a fish hits it, it collapses. And then you've got your exposed hook there and it resets. And it's pretty cool. My buddy gave it to me. He said, you might be able to throw that on BFS or your spinning rod and get that thing to float. That thing looks pretty cool. Definitely legit. Oh, Pat knows about these. Have you thrown these, Pat? Uh, Bassin 512, this is a a fly rod frog, but you could probably throw it on a light spinning or BFS rod. It's, it's decently heavy 16th maybe. All right. So here's something for storage. I thought this was cool. Fly rod people probably know what this is already. So, and I, I had something else totally different in mind and I didn't bring them down here to show them to you, but this is a pouch and inside this pouch, there's some Ziploc baggies and these Ziploc baggies have like Velcro. So you can add and take away and change and do all that stuff. So that's kind of neat. But what I was looking at, and you guys tell me what you think about this. Since they're flat and they're kind of four inch by four inch, what about freaking spinnerbait storage on that deal? Look at that. And you can just put a ton of your favorite spinnerbaits in there. And it's got lots of uh, like expansion. So I, I don't like the spinnerbait boxes that are all tall that they hang on the little ledges and stuff. Yeah, Pat, it's a leader wallet. Perfect. Yep. Fly rod guys, you know, when you have leaders, you have like all your leaders coiled up and in these packs, so you can pull them out and get to them easy, I guess, when you're fly fishing. But I'm going to put spinner baits in there. That's what I'm going to do. CD case. Yeah, remember CDs? Remember when like CDs were so awesomely new and were fresh? We thought we were so cool. Like, I have a CD player, triple beam CD player, single beam CD player. I'm dating myself. All you like millennial and young kids are like, what is he talking about? All right. This is the other thing I got. I got a couple more of these. I, I had some, uh, this is called a pill pack. This is for people to keep track of their pills and stuff, but I use it for hooks and sinkers. So they got little Ziploc bags. I've, I've shown a video on this before. This isn't anything new, but I got a couple more because I had the oven packed way too tight. But when they pack down, they're nice and flat. You got a little Velcro latch throw them in your pack. So I got two of those and I got some extra little pill packy things. It's kind of cool. Um, you take many pills. That's thanks, Pat. Thanks for coming out today. You're really helping out. Appreciate it. All right. So here's the real creme de la creme thing I want to talk about. Who's heard of the SLX DC? Wait for it. Pill pack. Uh, oh, you have an SLX Bassin? That's cool. But I bet you don't have one that looks like this. Or do you? Don't make fun of my pink line. Yeah, Pat has one too. So the SLX DC, this one's a little different than the one that they sell in America. This one is only sold in Japan. And you've probably seen the real test guy talk about this one. Now, the DC Corrado um, in the US is a 150 spool. And I think the 150 means 150 yards of line. And the Corrado is 150. Now I have a Scorpion, I think, is rated for 70 or 80. And it has a shallower spool, which gives it lower mass with the line on there. And I always talk about how I think the Scorpion casted so much better than my DC Corrado. And I think it might have been because of the line weight and the spool. Um, <laughs> Jacob pull the real test guy is a D how come, man? What did he do? Did he mess up? <laughs> um, and so I was looking at the SLX and 
Pat turned me on to this one and he said, go check this out on the real test. And the real test guy was casting better with the SLX than he was with the DC Corrado and I think the Scorpion. So when we started looking around, we think they have a different braking system in the SLX sold in Japan. Now, if you go to a site called Digitaka, D-I-G-I-T-A-K-I -I -I in Japan, you can look up the DC SLX and this one is called the 71XG. And it has an eight to something to one ratio. So it's fast. Um, I like fast reels. And man, it casts like a dream. And it just seems smaller and so pommable compared to some of the other reels um, that I've had. I don't know why this one seems so good. But it's like if I were to pick between this and the Scorpion, I would say even match as far as like usability. And I would probably go with the SLX just for price because you can get them. I think they're like, a little more than the States because you have to get them shipped, but they end up about 180 to 200 bucks where the SLX is, I think 180. And then uh, they don't even charge shipping. I don't think, and they come pretty fast. They're usually within two weeks, which is weird for overseas. Um, most of these like Chinese lures and stuff that I order, they take like a month to two months. So it's just like order it, forget about it. And then it's like Christmas one day. It just shows up in your mailbox. Jacob, his demeanor is just off. Says certain. They're just as good as a fanboy, certain reels, absolute jerk comments. If you do screw it, absolute jerk. Uh, okay. Yeah. Some people just don't like criticism. You know, fact is I don't know everything. So I'm pretty, pretty humble when people say stuff, you know, I don't know if you guys ever seen, and he's not here tonight. I don't think I don't see his name. Maybe he's watching. He's not talking. Gizmo car. If you ever see his comments are really long. That dude knows so much stuff. Um, he's always chiming in and like correcting me and showing me, but I'm, I'm cool with it. Cause he knows so much. I'm like, yeah, I'm willing to learn, you know, uh, that's a little steep. Oh, 180 bucks. Yeah. It's kind of pricey. What's the Taka Taka <laughs> Digitaka D I G I T A K A. I think Digitaka. Um, let's see. Of course, Pat, the JDM is really sweet. How much does the JDM cost? That's like what, 400 bucks? Um, let's see. Funny because I have one. Pill pack. I don't know. What do you guys got? You any questions for me or anything you want to see me do here in the near? Because uh, Pat and I are running out of places to fish, man. We're getting kind of like, I don't know, stir crazy. And it's hot. 180 189 bucks. For which one? The, the JDM? Or is it for the. Uh, is it? I don't even know what JDM is. Oh, Bass Five Twelve, four hundred dollars. Pat Powers to one ninety nine. No, I think it's. Uh, oh, thanks, Lou. Lou likes my fresh haircut. Man, I got skin today because it's a hundred degrees, and I was like, I got to get all my hair cut off. I'm dying. S.J. Bassin, we are still live, dude. I always think it's weird when people talk to me in a live stream. It's like kind of creepy. Okay. That's what you bought. Japanese domestic model. Bass if I try some of the lures you got in the box for the next video, like the lunker hunt ones. Yeah, I can try those. Um, it's hard though, you know, cause Pat and I, we go out fishing at like five and we usually finish by like eight or nine. Cause our, our rule of thumb is we like to not interrupt the family life as much as possible. So wherever we go, we meet at like dark o'clock and then we fish for three hours, come home, fall asleep. I get up and make a video and then I'll hang out with the family for the rest of the day. So, um, Henry, Oh, what's up, Henry? What's going on? I saw your name earlier and I was like, I don't know why I didn't recognize it, but Henry's the guy around the corner. He went up on one, one of my social posts. He caught like a four pounder in a pond that I swore had no fish anymore because I haven't been catching anything there, but. Um, no, I do not have the new Zodius, Henry. Do you have that? Pat probably has it. Anything expensive Pat has. <laughs> He'll like that one. So yeah, Pat and I, we go fishing super early in the morning and we're just running out of ponds and I have the, the bass boat and we jump in a couple of ponds every now and then with that, we've gone and tried to do some snakehead fishing. I think we just need to get into the Potomac and some deeper water, especially now with hot water or hot weather. And so we don't really know where to go and what to do right now. We're just kind of at our wits end. And it's so darn hot that, I mean, you wake up at 75, 80 degrees at like 
five in the morning. So it's, it's kind of like, do you want to fish? He's like, no. So let's see. Thinking of getting the DC for my scorpion. Oh, getting the Zodius for the scorpion. That would be a nice team. That'd be nice. It's been hot in Tennessee. I haven't had much desire. Yeah, I'm the same way, Billy. Would you like a video on leader lines later? I know you don't use them. You know what's funny? 512 on that one. I was talking to Pat today, and we were talking about fishing rods. I had a, a Amazon gift card, and I thought, maybe I'll get the Dobbins, or maybe I'll get, like, you know, not, I need a fishing rod like I need a hole in the head. And we were talking about um, bottom fishing and sensitivity, and, of course, GLX and NRX and Kistler come to mind as far as sensitivity goes. But they're all, like, really expensive. And Pat's like, you know, you're fishing your fishing rods with mono. So he's like, you're losing 40% of your sensitivity just fishing mono. But I like fishing mono. And I'm complaining about sensitivity. He's like, why don't you throw on, you know, braid with a leader? And I just don't do a lot of leaders. Talk me into it because I, I hate the way they sound flying through the eyes. Um, I feel like they're going to break off. I, I, I'm fine with the knots. I can do the knots and everything. But it's just... I just, I'm too lazy. I just cut the braid. I go with moss green braid tied on, throw it and I'm done. And, you know, I'm, I figure, Hey, if I get three less bites in the day because I have braid versus uh, fluorocarbon, maybe that's okay. But talk to me. Cause I just, I'm not a huge leader guy. Let's see. Bass photo, like a leader lines. I don't know how to, Oh, I don't, I know you don't use them. Yeah. Today I finally picked up a bass on one of those scum frogs I picked up. I'm better at catching frogs on frogs and bass. That's funny. I've done that. And I caught a bullfrog once. That's nasty. They're gushy and gross. Get the X pride. It's so sensitive. Yeah. You know what? I was thinking about that, Henry. That's a good call. Um, I've been looking at those. How much is the X pride? Like do you ballpark it? I'm kind of like in that hundred, 150 range and no more. And that's still a lot for a rod. Um, try it with the F FB or FG knot. I think it's an FG knot. Oh, is there an FB knot? Maybe that's a new knot. I use leaders on all braid rods. Phoenix rods. Are those good? I don't know anything about them. Braid to leader. Tie FG knot. No noise. I hear yours all the time, Pat. I hear it tick, 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 coming right out. You can tell, oh, 250 to three, 350 maybe for the X pride. That's a lot, man. FG, yeah, FG knot. Upgraded my spinning rods to ARC. So far, $129.99, five-year warranty. See, there's so many brands I don't even know about. Does anybody know about like any custom brands out there? Oh, Pat's doing that. That's going to be a video we do soon. Pat's building a fishing rod. Uh, he got some mud hole parts and components and some tools, and he's been spinning his own eyes and, you know, whatever you do. And uh, I was, my wife's like, oh, shit, you'll be doing that soon enough because she knows like anything that can be made by hand, I'll start making it because – First thing I want to do is make a whopper plopper. You guys remember that video? That didn't go well. Um, Pat, you need to pay attention to fishing. Yeah, that's true. What are you drinking? You know what? I I had a whiskey earlier. I was going to bring it and try to be cool. But you know what? I, I drank it too fast and it's gone. So now I'm down to ice water. So just ice water. But I do like my whiskey. What are you guys? Whiskey or scotch guys? Beer? What's your thing? The Dobbins Fury is pretty good. Yeah, I hear it's good. A lot of people say it's not super sensitive, but it's a darn good rod. You know, those rods I got from um, American Bait Works, I have to say it's pretty good. The $99 one, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'm going to put braid on that this weekend and see if it improves its sensitivity. Because as far as like the, the feel of the rod, I love it. But it's, the sensitivity is just a little, little off for me. Tequila shots. I could do that, Lou. We could do that later. Phoenix are under 200. SJ says some anyways. What is some? I don't know what you mean. All right. So we've been on now for like 30 or 40. Oh, Powers is a Diet Coke man. I, every time I'm calling Pat, he's like, hang on, I'm going in to get a Coke. That's his famous line. Hang on, I'm going in to get a Coke. I'm like, all right. So. So what else, guys? What do you guys want to see? I don't know what else to do on the live stream. I'm going to have Pat next time so we can chat about some stuff and, and keep the topic going. Iced tea in Texas. All right. Do you do half and half sweet tea, SJ? Or, I mean, Bass and 512, do you do half and half? Do you do tea and lemonade? Do you do sweet tea? Because I'm a Carolina boy. My family's from Mooresville. And who, who do you guys watch uh, NC Bassin down in Mooresville? He's awesome. 
him and I were starting out kind of at the same time. We had like two, three, 400 subscribers. We were subbing each other and talking back and forth. So we've kept in touch. I keep telling him I want to fish with him. Every time I go down to see my mom, I'm not too far away. I don't want to get out with him, but it just never pans out. But um, yeah, Bass and 512 says tea and lemonade. That's what I love, man. Especially if you get the little tea, uh, the little lemon pods floating around in there, like it's real lemon juice, the best. Lots of sugar too. Um, Dobbin Sierra. That's like 150 <laughs> favorite lures for Texas rig. Honestly, just a worm, uh, ribbon tail worm, purple and black. Um, I like, I like these little creature baits I've been doing lately. And do you guys remember these baits? I was pouring these guys right here. Those are pretty good, especially like in the darker colors and like the blacks and stuff. I've caught a couple on those. Um, they hold together pretty well and they're, they're longish, but they're not, um, too long. You know, they kind of, it's not a worm and it's not a creature bait. It's kind of in between. So it's kind of something different and they got a lot of action. If it would freaking focus, there you go. Um, and that came from China. Do, does anybody out there pour their own stuff? Big worm videos over 10 inch. That's something that probably isn't far off in the future because, um, we got to go deep lately. It's really, really hot. So that'd be a perfect thing to drag on the bottom. That's a good, that's a good tip, Pat. We should think about that. Wah, wah. Let's see. Green tea. You have Pat, try some river fishing for smallies. Yeah, I definitely need to do that. I have a lot of fun when I catch smallies. So Henry says the gray flapping hog is so good for the tea rig. Um, yeah, I haven't used it yet. have to try it. SJ, my eyes twitching. How about some big worm? Okay, I already said that one. Green pumpkin is killing it. Yeah, green pumpkin is always good. That um, creature bait I used last weekend, caught that decent fish, was a green pumpkin. Can't go wrong there. Looks like a good swim jig trailer. Oh, this thing? Yeah, maybe. You cut it in half and just let those legs go. Yeah, I haven't used chatterbaits in a while. I go through my phases, don't I? Like All of a sudden, I'm like, all chatterbaits. And then next thing you know, I'm like, all frogs. But... It's just how it goes. I think everybody's the same. I was looking for bullworms today. What is a bullworm? You need to get an indie. Oh, yeah. Indie yak angler. You guys ever watch that guy? That guy lives. Like if there's a fishing heaven, he already lives in it. Um, he floats down rivers and catches like three and a half, four and a half pound smallies. Like as fast as you can see him. Uh, try lizards. What's your favorite color worms? I don't know. A green pumpkin. And then just um, black and blue and some wine color sometimes. Did you try the jackhammer with the fire orange by chance? You know, I have it, and I tried to get it for so long because they were out of stock. I finally got a few. I, I don't even think I've thrown it, you know. I think I just stopped using it. But I should, sh I should start throwing the uh, chatterbaits more, especially around the areas with the snakeheads because I hear the snakeheads will tear up a chatterbait. <clears throat> yeah, the jackhammers are awesome. It's really hard to describe why they're better. It's it's strange, you know. Um, but don't discount the the other one. Pat, help me out. What's the name of that other one that we use that's not made by the jackhammer company, if you're still there? Um, oh, he's leaving. I forget. The other company that makes the um, – it's not the jackhammer. Does anybody know what the other one's called? Thunder Cricket. Yeah, that one. That one's good. I really like the Thunder Cricket. I would say it's probably equal in a different way as a jackhammer. Um, I forget which one's noisier. Oh, the Picasso. Yeah, that one's good too. I have a, uh, two Picassos and then Strike King. But yeah, the Thunder Cricket's the one I was thinking about. It has that blade that comes up and kind of has like a little nub at the tip. And that one works really good. So I have like five or six Thunder Crickets, five or six Jackhammers. I haven't used the Craw one yet. Um, but I, I always, I don't know why I always think of like red and Craw colors as like the colder weather. But I should pull them out and just try them all the time. The Jackal Pompadour. I do have two Pompadour Micros. And I use those on my BFS. And those are awesome. <clears throat> I've had a couple decent blowups on those. Those aren't cheap either. Those are expensive. I think I'm going to have to roll. It's about 9.09. .09. What else you guys want to see? Any? Just send me some comments on this later if I don't get to it today. And just let me know things you want to see. I'll try to work it into the next videos. And, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for coming along tonight. This is cool. 
you know, we had about 15 people on, which is more than I thought. I, I have a funny story. A long time ago, I, I do these boxing matches and stuff. And I set this boxing match up with all my buddies one time. And I was like, hey, yeah, let's let's do this boxing match. I'll get some food. We'll have beer. We're going to watch this big fight. And I think it was a, like a Floyd Mayweather fight. And I was just praying that Floyd Mayweather would get beat finally because I can't stand the guy. Um, I mean, he's a great boxer, but he's just so cocky. And so I get this stuff set up. I'm sitting down in the basement and I'm waiting for people to come. And then like the phone starts ringing and texts start coming in. My friends are like, yeah, I can't make it. Yeah. Wife's pissed at me. You got to stay home. This is happening. That's happening. Dude. I sat down in the basement by myself for like the first 20 minutes of that fight. And I had invited like 12 people and my daughter's like, dad, I feel so sorry for you. I'm just like, don't worry. I, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. And then finally one of my boys showed up and we ate some food and hung out. But I was doing this tonight and I was thinking, um, you know, I can't believe I'm going to do this thing. And then like, nobody's going to show up and it's going to be just like the boxing match thing. So I'm glad you guys came along. So, all right, guys, cool chat. Bastin 512, Henry, um, SJ, Ricky, William Powers, <laughs> Billy Knowles. You guys take care. Have a good night. Stay cool this week and share some of your fishing adventures. And uh, Henry, hit me up if you're around the area this week. We'll fish if we get a chance. I want to see some of your gear. Maybe maybe play with uh, your fishing rods and see which ones might be more sensitive than some of the ones I got. But uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. Take care. Later.